Hi, welcome to the Market Alert for Friday the 28th of April 2017. So why have the markets become very quiet and more, almost untradeable? Uh, as I said yesterday afternoon, best thing to do sometimes is just stand aside. So this got me thinking uh, yesterday and after sitting and thinking for several hours, I think I found out why. Uh, again, I uncovered a pattern that occurs and then will forewarn us that it's best not to trade until the activity uh, picks up. Now during the last few years, uh, along with the implied volatility, there's also something called the VIX, which is the volatility index. And this has uh, become a favorite tool of the professional traders. Uh, if they can't pump the stock market up, then what they do is they sell short in the volatility index and it's becoming a more and more popular thing to do as the headline says here vix crush so that means that they've sold heavily into the uh, vix futures market safe stocks as crude drops gdp flops and u.s credit risk pops and as it says here yesterday a slew of disappointing data hard and soft government shutdown fears grow and collapsing gdp expectations and declining earnings expectations Crude oil and uh, heating oil, uh, not heating oil, on leaded gas uh, plunging, bonds bid, gold higher, and then there's North Korea. And yet the stock market stays on the highs. So apart from the Federal Reserve trading desk, we've got a situation where there's a lot of traders who are short selling the VIX in order to keep the market up. Now when you short sell the VIX, you know, let's just move on to a volatility index chart. Now you can do this with the ETX and other spread betting companies. Let me just show you where to find it. It's uh, listed in the uh, market watch column. Now if you can't see this, if you right click on here and left click show all, it uh, should appear. That's if the spread betting uh, service that you use actually have the code uh, it will be VIX and then you can see here on this chart now this is a futures uh, contract so the data isn't an awful lot if I just click on daily there's not a lot to be seen there so what I'm going to do uh, it's handy for intraday you can see this obviously is inversely related to the stock market so what they do here is they sell heavily into the futures market in the VIX and that uh, brings the stock market back up, which is what we keep seeing. But what I'm going to do is to go to my other software, which I've had for years and years and years, and uh, CRB data, which I've subscribed to for the last 20 plus years as well. And this is a monthly chart of the VIX, but let's just uh, get rid of that for a second. And let's just concentrate on why this week the market has become quiet. Le Pen gets in on... Uh, well, no, sorry, she doesn't get in, sorry. Macron wins the first round of the French elections and this gives the opportunity for the traders to slam the volatility index. You see them uh, selling there as an increase in volume and then the market's been sideways and yesterday, again, they are able to actually move the VIX lower. So behind the scenes, what they're doing is using the, the volatility index in order to actually short uh, the VIX and then bring the Dow up and again you can see this in the weekly charts you can see there how we're way down in the lows but when you look at the monthly chart of the volatility index and there's two things that are absolutely fascinating here so here we've got the 2008 uh, crash uh, housing market uh, toxic mortgages etc and you can see as we've uh, gone through here how the volatility index has just been sideways. I'm just going to throw in a zero line here, I'm just going to draw a line in. And you can see that once we got back on track in 2010 or just prior to that, I'll just draw that in, you can see that we're below uh, these levels, pre crash levels. I'll just drag that over slightly there. So you can see we've been bouncing below it and then coming back and this is absolutely fascinating because we keep putting in these lows and you can see there we're now just below this one as well and when we get down in these lows we then get a spike back to the upside so again and I will say this there is 
uh, a change coming in this market there's no doubts about that because low volatility can't exist in uh, in in this situation uh, at all it never does it always comes back as you can see these big spikes the other thing that is absolutely stunning in this chart is the increase in vix contracts trading so the traders have been uh, using this as a tool from 2011 and you can see the increase in volume there so this is why we're seeing what what i believe is what we're seeing at the moment in the markets because of this additional trading tool that has become popular with the professionals is to actually sell the VIX and thereby this supports their portfolios and again that's reflected here as you can see in the chart now is there a difference between the VIX and the implied volatility yes there is uh, but the pattern and relationship is exactly the same one is a measurement of risk of the option premium, which I still prefer more so than the VIX, because this gives a, that when you sell an option, you're selling something into the future, whereas the, the futures contract is being used as a hedge against the portfolio of the trader. And that's why I prefer it more of a, a predictive thing than the, um, the VIX. Uh, VIX could be useful on an intraday basis. You could have a five minute chart of the VIX actually trading alongside so you can see what they're doing, but it just complicates things and you don't need to do that. What you need to know is the background of a market and by understanding the background of the market and when we get into the lows of these volatilities, if we just go back to uh, ETX, let me just make this uh, an hourly chart. When you, you see that you've got this sort of sideways movement and the slam to the downside again yesterday, um, it won't go back to Sunday unfortunately this contract has just rolled over let me just go back to the daily chart here then so you've got uh, this slam on uh, Monday and that is what's allowing the market to levitate on the highs so coming up to speed then usual stuff now daily chart so you can see there's some weakness around and what I mean by the weakness around is a uh, very simple we've got uh, the market struggling with 21.045 we've got lower highs being put into the market as well at the moment so there is some weakness around and this is why they're using the VIX to actually try and hold this market there's no news to drive the market to the upside the only news that's uh, going to be coming out shortly is uh, obviously uh, a week on Sunday with the French elections no interest rate decision uh, this next week I don't think uh, I will check for uh, Tuesday's uh, alert but uh, we'll see if that is it's generally the last week of the month isn't it which is uh, next week I can't remember but I'll have a look anyway but the main thing is going to be for for the pros to have some sort of news to drive the market to the upside is the zero hedge um, article says here um, about you know the news is all bad and yet the market uh, remains on the upside and obviously there's an irony here as well you know with uh, the Monty Python always look on the bright side of, of life as well which uh, adds a bit of humor to uh, what's uh, going on behind uh, the scenes and obviously the low volatility at the moment so news wise today what have we got uh, anything to move the markets we've got the uh, uh, any GDP news from the US I don't think so um, oh we have yeah I know there was uh, rumors this week well not rumors but uh, I did see something about uh, advanced GDP um, forecast at 1.3 that will be interesting to see if that actually comes out at that level uh, previous 1.9 so uh, again problem for for Trump uh, what else have we got anything whilst the markets open to give it a bit of a boost um, revised UM consumer sentiment that's out at three uh, Brainard speaking and uh, Harker so they're wheeling out a few uh, FOMC members as well again because they keep slamming the VIX it's making it quiet it's making it difficult and it, hopefully this video will be able to show you uh, or give you a reason as to why because when we can't see why something's happening it makes it uh, very frustrating and difficult now we can see it and we can say well we don't touch the volatility uh, so don't trade unless the volatility is actually above nine percent etc we can actually find a pattern 
in this and uh, something that I will continue to look at and then say right when this volatility in DX gets at this level we're not going to get the momentum to actually uh, trade or to get the profits uh, in, in its uh, simplest form. Right let's uh, have a look at the implied volatility before uh, finishing off. So on the implied volatility front uh, we've got uh, a slam in this one as well 8.38 down from 860 from yesterday. So again, you can see why the market's being held on the the, uh, the highs. But we know uh, more so than with the VIX that when we get down to these levels, we get a correction in the market. Plus, we can add into the mix as well. We've got the uh, sell in May go away. And if you get a shock result with the, the French election, and who knows, because obviously, as I said before, you know, Brexit was a done deal. We were going to remain as was Clinton 98% the poll showed that she would be elected and then that didn't happen slightly different with the French of course because they've already had the first round Macron ahead but who knows uh, we live in a crazy world and anything is possible uh, these days right that's it from me have a great weekend I will report in today if there's anything but personally I will be waiting to see if the volatility increases and the way to to see that apart from a VIX chart on moving back to the upside, is also if the trades start to go on and make profits as opposed to just being filled and then doing nothing. So uh, it, there's nothing wrong with actually staying on the sidelines. That's the skill in being a trader, being able to pick and choose given the markets, uh, given what the market is actually showing you at the time. Right, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.